Be safe. Yo, I was about to say, it'd be so fun if I start cracking him on a frog. <laughs> oh my gosh, what's up y'all? Welcome back to Fish the Moment. Today here on a little lake by my house, catching them on a frog. These are some spawning bass. There's a bunch of pollen on the water. Can't see them sight fishing, but they're eating that bronze eye popping frog. I love frog fishing too. <laughs> Oh man, this is so fun. That's a nice fish, solid three pounder right there. Suck down that frog. That's what I'm talking about, guys. Whew. Nice fish, let's get him back. Here we go. Just fishing a Spro Bronze Eye Prop Popping Frog in the red ear color. This is one of my favorite baits in the entire world of fish. I love when they eat a frog. Now guys, this is not a very fast approach to fishing. It's not like I'm covering water with this frog. What I'm trying to do is just cast it up to high percentage areas like banks with this pollen on top of it. And I'm working it really slow. I'm twitching it back and forth, trying to hop it side to side with some short rod twitches. And nice thing about this popping frog by Spro is that it walks side to side. And so you'll get some side to side motion, but it'll also chug with that popping mouth. And so you'll get the chugging and the side to side walking. It takes a little bit of practice to get right, but once you get it right, you can walk that bait pretty much in place. That was a really big splash, but don't do that. But you can walk it side to side in place and those short twitches side to side of that frog, what triggers those bites. And a lot of new anglers struggle to walk a frog side to side, especially over short distances. And the main reason for this is because they're overworking the bait. Most of the time when you fish a frog, you're gonna be throwing on braided fishing line. And if you pull that frog too hard, it's just going to move forward and not twitch side to side. So the trick is to leave a little bit of slack in your line and give that frog very short rod twitches. The shorter, the better. That will get that bait to walk side to side in place and not chug forward. So just remember, don't overwork the frog, short rod twitches, and you're going to be walking your frog perfectly. Got him, good one. Oh, that's so fun. Oh, if you guys are not fishing a frog in the spring, you are missing out, dude. That is a awesome bite. <laughs> You can't tell, frog fishing is one of my favorite things to do in the whole world. I mean, that fish just chewed that frog. I catch so many fish on a frog, guys. Again, I haven't shown it off in videos, but it's probably one of my top three techniques of all time. I've probably done well in more tournaments throwing a frog than pretty much anything else, or maybe fishing a jig, especially when you get in that spring and that summertime, they will chew this thing. That's a really nice two pound bass, a little female right there. That's all I'm talking about. Oh, I got this guy back down the lake. Guys, this is so fun. Fishing that bronze eye popping frog. Best color again, that red ear. That's the only color I throw in this frog. And one thing you notice about this frog is I actually customize it a little bit. What I'll do is actually trim the legs of that frog skirt down just a little bit. And what I'll actually do is trim one leg a little bit shorter than the other. That promotes a better side to side walk. So trim that tail on one side a little bit shorter than the other, cut it down so you have about two, two and a half inches worth of skirt on the bottom. And you're going to catch a ton of fish this spring on that frog. So really quick guys, let me walk you through the equipment I'm throwing this bronze eye popping frog on. And my equipment's actually a blast from the past. If you ever watched the old Bassmaster Elite series, back in 2006, 2007, right when it started, you will see Dean Rojas throwing this exact rod and reel combo with the original bronze eye frog. And this is a seven foot, medium heavy action, quantum signature series Dean Rojas frogging rod with a seven to one Burner 1170, this is a tour PT by Quantum. And I'm pairing that with 65 pound braided line. I always use 65 pound braid. You can get away with it, no problem with this frog. No need to throw 50 or 30. Just go to 65, it never breaks. You can pull them over any kind of cover. It actually casts a little bit easier too than your lighter braids. And that's pretty much it. Tying that frog on with a Palomar knot and just going to town, catching a lot of big fish with this setup. Got him. So fun. Not a big one, but a nice one. Here we go, another one on that frog. Super shallow on that tree. Look how these fish are eating that frog. It's when you know they want it. When they eat it, both hooks, top of the mouth, crushing it. 
There we go, good fish. Not a big one, but just a little pound, pound and a halfer, but really fun bite. Oh man, there we go. Next, let's talk about where to fish a frog. And when I throw a frog, I'm throwing it 90% of the time around either lily pads, grass, or overhanging trees. My favorite place to fish a frog is around lily pads. And I've caught fish up north and down south really well, throwing a frog around lily pads in the summertime, the spring, and the fall. And really what you're trying to do with this frog is fish it over the top of these lily pads because it's hard to get other baits like a spinner bait or a crank bait through all of the pads as well as the pad stems. And in my experience, there are two types of lily pads you're going to encounter. The first are the pads that don't grow more than, let's say, 20 to 30 feet off the bank. And because these lily pads are pretty close to the shore, the bass are not going to be that spread out. And therefore, I can fish my frog like I showed you earlier in this video, which is to cast it up to the bank and then twitch it side to side as it works through the pads. And I'm trying to focus on bringing that frog through the holes in the pads. Usually wherever there's a hole, that's where those bass are going to ambush bait fish and bluegill. And so I focus on casting that frog up to the holes in the lily pads and it produces a lot of great results. The other type of pads you'll encounter are lily pad fields, where you have lily pads that stick 100, 200, 300 feet off the bank. And these lily pad fields can be very daunting to fish because the fish can spread out seemingly anywhere in that giant mass of pads. And so when I'm trying to fish a frog through a situation like that, I don't actually try to work it side to side slowly like I did earlier in this video. What I like to do instead is to cast the frog and just reel it in at a nice steady pace over the top of those lily pads. And the only time I'm going to stop that frog is when I get to a nice big hole in those lily pads. Every time I get to a hole, I'll stop that frog for two or three seconds, twitch it side to side, and then I'll keep reeling it again. And you'll be surprised at how many fish will come up and crush that frog as you're just reeling it over the surface, even though those tails aren't kicking any water or anything like that. And also, a lot of those fish will track that bait until it gets into a hole, and then when it stops in that lily pad hole, they'll suck it down, and you'll put a lot of good fish in the boat that way as well. The next place I like to throw a frog is around grass. And grass, again, comes in a few different variations. The first is going to be shallow water willow grass. And this is grass that grows in, let's say, four feet of water and less, and it won't grow more than 10 to 15 feet out from the shoreline. And I really like to fish a frog in the grass when the grass is very thick and close to the bank. The reason a frog works well in this situation is because those fish can't spread out very far in that grass, and so really all you need to do is work that frog very slowly on the edge of that thicker grass that's close to the shore, and those fish will eat it. When the grass is more spread out and a little bit thinner, I actually prefer to fish a bait like a swim jig or a buzz bait instead, but when that grass is very thick and close to the bank, the frog is your best bet. Another type of grass that I like to fish a frog in is matted vegetation. And you'll find this on a lot of river systems up north as well as on Lake Gunnersville and the Tennessee River down south. And these grass mats are formed by grass that grows anywhere from 3 to 10 feet tall out in the middle of the lake and that becomes matted on the surface. And you can catch a lot of good fish throwing a frog over the top of this matted grass because bass will sit just a few feet underneath the surface and ambush any sort of bluegill or even birds that land on top of these grass mats. And so when I'm fishing this frog, I'm going to throw it just like I was in the lily pad fields earlier. I'm just going to slowly reel it over the top of the grass until I get to a hole. Then I'll twitch it a few times, keep reeling it in, and sooner or later a big bass is going to crash through that grass mat and destroy your frog. The last location I like to throw a frog in is around overhanging trees and bushes. And a frog is a great bait in the situation because it's very hard to get other baits like a spinner bait or a crank bait up underneath these trees. And at the same time, a lot of bass like to suspend underneath these overhanging trees and bushes and so you don't really want to throw a bottom bait here. And that makes the frog the perfect bait to throw there because it's very weedless, you can skip it underneath these bushes, and then when it's back underneath that tree, you can walk it in place side to side and not move it very far. And so that bait will stay in the strike zone a lot longer than other baits. And so this frog is my number one bait to throw around these overhanging trees and limbs that will cast a lot of shade on the water, and then they're tough to get other baits into. Really quick guys, I want to let you know that we're adding a ton of new map breakdowns to my website, fishthemoment.com. Just head to the Lake Breakdowns tab and you will find 15 new summer breakdowns on lakes all over the country. We have lakes up north and down south now and these maps include over 60 spots 
in four different sections of the lake and they're picked up by professional bass fisherman Randy Blockett. And so definitely check out these map breakdowns if you're struggling to find fish this summer on your home lake. And also check out my new virtual seminars tab on my website. I actually have a upcoming seminar on June 26th, that's a Friday night, and it's an advanced bass fishing electronics class. I'll be teaching you how to get the most out of your electronics with a focus on finding and catching bass, not just basic understanding, which will really help take your bass fishing electronics game to the next level. There are only 30 spots available in this class, so sign up now before it fills up. Let's also talk about when to fish a frog. And there's a really big misconception out there that frog fishing is only good first thing in the morning, the last hour of the day, and maybe in low light conditions like cloud cover or rain. But this is the furthest thing from the truth and I actually catch the majority of my really big frog fish in the middle of the day when the sun is at its highest point and those fish are tucked up really tight underneath the shade of the trees, the lily pads, and the grass. And a frog is one of the few baits you can actually fish over the top of these thick matted pieces of vegetation or underneath these overhanging bushes where these bass will get when you have those high skies and bright sunny days. And so I think a lot of guys miss this middle of the day frog bite because they'll put it down right after the sun peaks over the horizon or right after the cloud cover goes away. But I highly recommend throwing a frog during the middle of the day, as long as you have some matted vegetation or some shade lines to fish that frog around, you definitely won't be disappointed. In addition to the best time of day to throw a frog, let's talk about when you should fish it in terms of time of year. And I find that I can get fish to eat a frog anytime the water temperatures are above 55 degrees. That means I've caught fish on a frog as early as February here in Arkansas, when the water temperatures just reached that 55 degree mark, and as late into the year as November or December, as that water temperature is falling from you know the 80s and 90s down to the 50s. It seems like once that water temperature gets below 55 degrees, those fish get a little more lethargic and they won't come up to the surface to eat that frog as well. But anytime that water temperature is above 55 degrees, you can catch them on it. You just need to commit to it and throw it. You can definitely put some good fish in the boat. Got him. That was the same fish. I came back and got it. A big one. That's what I'm talking about. Oh yeah. Missed that guy earlier, dropped a waypoint on that exact spot. He came back and crushed it. That's a nice one right there. Got that frog. Oh man, that was awesome bite. Nice fish. <laughs> oh, there we go. Nice one right there, guys. Let's get back in the lake. Oh, there we go. Man, I'm loving this frog, guys. They are just choking this thing when they get it. That last fish actually blew it out of the water about two and a half hours ago and I actually put a waypoint right where that fish was, came back two hours later and he ate it. And so a lot of times when you miss fish like this, if you can't follow up with that wacky rig worm, come back later to that exact same spot, that same fish, throw the frog over the top of them again. And a lot of times if they miss it the first time, they'll come back and eat it a second time. That's awesome, guys. One really important thing I haven't talked about when it comes to frog fishing is the hook set. And this is one of the most challenging things for new frog fishermen to get down because a lot of guys will set the hook too early on their frog fish and they'll set as soon as they see the bass blow up on their bait. And I've actually trained myself for the years to wait about a full second before I set the hook on a frog fish and also to make sure that I see that frog completely disappear underwater before I set the hook. And those are two very simple concepts to get your mind around, but they're very difficult to put into practice when you get to the lake. And so I highly recommend that when you're frog fishing to consciously make an effort to count one 1,000 before you set the hook and also look very carefully to see that your frog has actually disappeared underneath the surface. Now again, that's very easy to say now, but very tough to do when you have a four pounder blowing up on your frog. But I can guarantee that you will get a lot more fish in the boat if you wait that one second and look for your frog. But if you do miss it, well, here's a tip for you. See that? Just swirled on it. Come back here, fish. It's the second one down the bank. There he is. 
Missed the frog, got him with a wacky worm. Always have a follow-up bait on guys, that's what I'm talking about. Not a big one, just a little male bass. A lot of times those male bass this size will miss. You can see he's peeing, that's definitely a male. They're moving up here. Those male bass will miss the frog, but then you can follow up that wacky worm and put him in the boat. We're not really worried about catching these males today. We just want five of those big females, but nice little fish right there. So guys, that's it for this video. Hopefully it gave you a better understanding of when, where, and how to fish a frog, and will give you some confidence to try this technique on the lake. And so if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like down below and also subscribe to the channel if you want to see more fishing content like this. And feel free to leave a comment if you have any questions about anything I talked about. And so other than that, thanks for checking out the video and I'll see you all in the next one.